Okay, everybody, I'm back. How was your Memorial Day? I hope everybody had a good, blessed, and uh, safe Memorial Day weekend. And we're back to work. And it just seemed, I don't know, at the uh, Friday staff meeting, it seemed like it had been forever since we had been back together. So I'm, in a way, glad that it's over and we're back to doing the same routine. But then, on the other hand, it's nice to have a break. So... But while we were on the break, guess what I did? I sewed her together. She's all together. Let's look at her. Peter, can you just get a view of her? Miss Primrose Cottage, right there she is in all her glory. She's a big one. And I must say, I'm pretty proud of her. I think she's looking very, very nice. What do you guys think? Now, don't worry if you don't have yours done. This is something, you, you just pace yourself, okay? But if you've watched any of these videos, you know I like to sew small, right? So wrestling around that big old quilt, that was really something. What I learned, well, I already knew this, but I mean, what came back to me as I was sewing all that big quilt together is if you have a small cabinet like I have here, and it's just this wide, okay? And uh, it's got some room here, but that quilt is humongous, right? So what I did at home was I've got a set of TV trays, if you have a card table, if you have some kind of portable table that you can either put to the side or the front or both, a card table on the front would be fabulous, and a little TV tray on the side would just be fabulous, because once you get all that weight under your needle, it is going to start pulling and shuffling and wanting to take the, the fabric where the weight is. Okay, so you've got to distribute that weight and get as much weight off of the needle as you can. So what I typically do is all the length here, I kind of bring it up and lay it on my lap. I don't let it lay on the floor. I bring it up. I smooth all this out, making this real smooth. And if as I'm sewing and it's going that way, I'm stopping and rearranging. Okay, I'm not just zhu, 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 and just letting it do willy-nilly. You know I love that word willy-nilly, right? Uh, so anyway, you just don't let it just go all over the place. You keep it straight. You keep it um, um, uncumbered. Is that a word, uncumbered? Well, uh, if something's cumbersome, cumbersome. If it becomes it not, be... if it becomes not cumbersome, then it has to be uncumbered, uncumbered. I suppose. Okay. I don't know. We'll have to ask Oxford. Yeah, because as I was sewing, I did get to this one place where I wasn't paying attention, and I let some of the weight fall on off the table here, and. All of a sudden, my seam wasn't a quarter inch seam anymore because all that weight was tugging. I mean, I only went that far until I realized it. So what I had to do is I had to stop, raise my presser foot, realign it, and come back. And it was too short, so I just realigned it and backed up about 10 stitches and started my quarter inch again, and then I, I picked it out so I could open the seam. So no big deal, but I had to catch it right away or else I was gonna be in big trouble. You see what I'm saying? Now with the little miniature quilt, it's not as uh, big, so I don't have to worry about it as much. And so today we're gonna put together sections three, four, and five. And we're gonna do it with the little one so it doesn't take as long, okay? And then after we get done with that, we're gonna talk about, since we're almost completely done, we're gonna talk about picking out your backing fabric and what goes into that. If you've read your book, you know if you get 45 inch width fabric, you need seven and a half yards. Now for those of you who bought your kit from us, from Always in Stitches here in Noblesville, you have a nice 20% off coupon in your uh, kit. 
I don't know if any of you realize that or not, but that's pretty nice. So um, get that out. Make sure that you don't lose it because it's, if you lose it, you lose it. Is it required to have the coupon present? Yes, with oh, them yes. You must bring your to coupon to get the discount. In. Yeah, because all the girls up front don't know who's in the group. So yeah, you have to have your coupon. It came in the kit. So make sure you get that when you come in to get your backing. Now, if you get a hundred and eight inch wide fabric, that's typically known as backing fabric. Uh, you only need, I think it's three or four yards. Let me look, make sure. It's in the front of your book. Oh no, it's on the back of your book. It's on the back of your book. You need three yards, okay? So, and um, we recommend a generous three yards, so that gives you plenty if you use 108. But the backing fabric, if you're gonna use 45 wide, is seven and a half yards. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons between the two. So, let's get with it. Let's get sections three, four, and five completed. I'm really excited about it. I've got them laid out here. Here's where we're gonna start. Uh, you know, we uh, talked about drawing our arrows, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to sew these two pieces together, then I'm going to sew these two pieces together. So, there's that one. I'm going to lay that on my table like I'm going to sew it, and here's this one, and I'm going to lay it on my table like I'm going to sew it. Now, I took my pin cushion home now that we're on, you know, the very last part of the whole thing. And I glued it in, <laughs> so now it, it works pretty good. And look, I matched my pins to the pin cushion. I took all the blue ones out. I don't even see the, I don't see any yeah, pins. Yeah, there they are. But because the blue ones just didn't go with the fabric. <laughs> Had to do it, couldn't stand it. Okay, I'm going to, no seams are gonna match up on this one, so I'm just gonna pin the front. And I'm going to pin this because I don't want that to catch on my feed dogs and my foot and get whopper jawed. I know that's a Hoosierism. Whopper jawed. I wonder where that saying came from. You know, with the internet these days, you can find out anything you want to know. Some things you don't even want to know. Okay. Now notice that I've got my little baby machine back. Uh, they had to use... Oh, I didn't even notice. You didn't? No, not yeah, until they, you said something. They needed the big one out on the floor because we had run out of them. So. so she's back. She's back home where she belongs. I'm telling you, if you need a machine to travel with, or if you're a beginner or if you have a grandchild, or if you have a, a child that is wanting to learn to sew, man, this is the best little machine. I just think this is, you just can't go wrong with this machine. It's got a good price point. It's not intimidating. There's not a lot of things to, uh, to learn on it. It's a good basic machine, but it does a lot. And Dawn's not going to say something good about something unless she absolutely loves it. That's right. I'm not going to tell you I love it if I don't love it. Ain't going to happen here. So, now, remember last week, when uh, last time I was here, it wasn't last week, it was a couple weeks ago, and I tried to match up those two seams, and I said, oh, I don't think those are supposed to match up. Well, on my big one, I'm going to come over here, and I'm a big one. I'm going to try and find that block. Huh, where was that? What block was it? It was, uh, that's section one. I think it was on section two. Yes, it was up here. Let me get something to point with. Here, I'll get my, uh. Your thing. My thing here. Your thing. Okay, it's right here. See that where I thought that that seam and that seam should match, that those two seams oh, should yeah, match, yeah, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, they don't. No. They're not supposed to match at all. Uh -uh. It's much more evident on the big one yeah. than it is on the little one. Oh, is that somebody knocking? Yeah. Oh. That was the me. I, I didn't know if it was the quilt police. No, it's not the <laughs> quilt police. He's silly. No such thing as the quilt police. Is there? 
Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna sew these two together. Now, Peter, you're right in my uh, my path where I'm gonna have to get up and get more blocks. Well, which know. ones do you need? Well, uh, I've got to press these first. Oh, okay. But that's where I'm going to be going back and forth. Okay. Okay, now see how that fell on the floor? Where'd it go? Well, my goodness, I'm not even sewing. How come I'm not sewing? <laughs> my, my machine came undone. My machine came unthreaded. It's well, probably it's like probably fun. being passive aggressive with you because you neglected it. Because I left it alone it. for so long. Hey, look, I raised up my foot because you don't ever ever thread your sew machine with your presser foot down. You want the pressure of the presser foot to be. I'm gonna go through that right there. And then there's a little thing back here, a little tension disky kind of thing. And then I'm gonna thread it. And look how easy this is to thread. Now I mean, you just go and you slip it right in there and then you pull this thing up and it just threads it right lickety split. Look at that. All right. Now let's try this again. Now look, these blocks are not the same. Look at that, one block is lots bigger. What size are these blocks supposed to be? Let's see. Was that when you were sewing in the dark? When I was sewing in the dark, that's when the lights went out in Georgia. See how big this one is? I may have just forgot to, uh, Square it up. Yeah, square this one up. I didn't square that one up. Let's see. So I'm going to square it up. It's supposed to be uh, five inches. What's half of five inches? Two and a half. So I'm going to go right here to my two and a half. I know that's the middle. And I'm going to go to two and a half. Okay, so. So see... What's good about using a square ruler is I've got a point right here at two and a half that I can just zero in right on that corner and I can see that that seems at two and a half, that seems at two and a half. So I know that I'm not going to take, I'm not going to move this down to five right here and cut all off on the same side. Oh my goodness, no, that would give me a lopsided block. I'm going to take that two and a half arrow that's right in the middle there and I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm going to make sure two and a half is at that seam, two and a half is at that seam. I'm going to turn it. Now I can go to the five, but not only am I going to look at the five, I'm also going to make sure that my two and a half lands right back in my middle. That that's on the seam, that's on the seam. And now I know that my block, see, didn't square it up. So now they're all together, but now I gotta look and see how they go. That one goes like this, and this one goes like that. So I'm gonna have it like that. Alrighty, let's go back and do this again. Okay. Pin. I didn't even notice that the first time. I must have gotten sidetracked or something. But look how much better it does when you have it the correct size. Squaring up is so important because if you square up at this point, as it gets bigger and harder to square up because you don't have rulers that big, you know that it's square because it fit here at this level here. And as you go, it's just going to get easier and easier. Don't run over your pins. Now 
that's good. Okay, now I need my other block. Hello, block. Get it. Now, before I started today, I took a little time to clean my room. And when I cleaned my room, I cleaned my iron and I cleaned my machine. So it was just like a little cleaning episode before we got started here today. But it's always important to remember to clean your iron. Okay, now let's make sure these, oh, that one looks a little bigger, that nine patch, I don't think I squared it up. Let's check it out. See, that one's exactly five. This one's exactly not five. Look at how much bigger it is. Look at that. Wow. Now, I don't have a middle. Do you see that? There's uh -huh. nothing in the middle. But you have it in thirds. I have it in thirds. So what's a third of five? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look. And I'm going to kind of go. Now that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good where there's some all the way around. So this is three and a fourth. So that would be one and two th and three fourths. One and three fourths, one and three fourths. No, maybe not. Okay, I'm just gonna go with it. I just am looking to make sure that it kind of looks even all the way around, that I'm not taking more off of one side than I am the other. So see how you can see that that's kind of the same width that I've taken off there. And because I don't have any points, you see, I'm not disturbing anything. So now I'm gonna lay it on the five and you're gonna see that I have about the same amount to cut off as I did before. Great lesson in squaring up. So see about the same amount. So there we go. So now they're the same size. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, let's go back and sew those together. <clears throat> now, does it matter if this pink is here or if the white is there? No. The book says this way. Is it going to, like, be a total loss if you do it this way? No. For it's your it quilt. Well, for me it would be. But <laughs> uh, for... Uh, total loss. No, it would be oh, a total that's loss. that's funny. I tell you what, I've got this quilt. It's a small quilt, but it's tiny pieces. It's half squares and quarter square triangles that are, like, less than an inch. And um, I was so happy with it when I got it done. Sent it to the quilter, got it back, and realized that one of the blocks was turned around. Now, I have been known to take out the quilting, take out the block, and turn it, and give it back to the quilter. I've been known to do that. But <laughs> I didn't do that in this case. And do you know that every time I look at that quilt... It haunts you. It I cringe every single time, every single time. <laughs> and, um, but I still have it up. So I'm trying, you know, I'm trying really hard, people. I think, I think it's going to come out. Something tells me it's going to get unquilted and well, that block is going to be precision. I don't know. Every time I look at it, I have to go take more meds. <laughs> oh it's my one of those little whatnots from uh, Kim oh. Deal. You can't do the whole entire whatnot quilt and then have a block turn. I'm telling you. Eh, just take it out. Yeah, I might. It's right in the middle, too. Oh, anyway. you have to, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. All right, see how that falls down? 
If I had another table there, that wouldn't happen. Uh, now I'm going to sew in one of my leaders and enders. Oh, I could have cut that, but I didn't. Okay, now I'm going to uh, press them open. And I'm going to use my uh, notion that I shall not name. The dachshund tail? Yeah. Wait, what kind of dogs do you have? I have schnauzers. Okay, we'll call it a schnauzer tail. Schnauzers. My babies, my baby boys, and my girl. Chloe is the girl. Biscuit and Gizzy are the boys. They came from the same litter. But Biscuit is uh, kind of fluffy like a, like a biscuit. Oh. Yeah. Chubby. Chubby. Oh. Little chubby guy. He was the, uh, he was the runt. Oh. So he's the little chubby runt. Runts make the best dogs. So cute. Okay, the best now pets. see how I that think, goes with that. I think I have one of the runts. You do? Yeah. And this goes with this. So now I'm going to fold that over. It like that. I'm gonna fold this over. I'm gonna lay it like that. Now notice that I fold the smallest piece and put it on top. Now I typically do that. I don't know uh, why. I just have always done it that way. Um, I think that puts the bulk underneath you, you know, because the bigger piece is underneath you. So. That's just always the way I've done it. I put the smaller piece on top. And of course I'm gonna pin like I always do. Pin to win. And I really am going, and look at how it just lines right up, babe. What? I mean, if that. None of my blocks ever line up. I'm if so that jealous. had not been. Um, so jealous. Squared up, those wouldn't that wouldn't have worked. I'm having way. block envy. Are you? Yep. Before you uh, started filming this series, had you ever squared up a box? No. Yeah, and do you see why it's so important to do that? I have a the. I think it's called cinnamon toast quilt. Uh -huh. I'm working on all yeah. the blocks are all different sizes. Yeah. I can't figure out what it is wrong because every time I sew. Every time I make a block, uh -huh. or sew the units to make one block, the block, the units that I'm putting together are all, they don't match. Are they supposed to? They're supposed to I all don't... be the same size? Yeah. It doesn't say to square them up. And I'm afraid if I do square them up, then I'm gonna throw off the whole quilt. Well, what I would do in that case, let's say for instance, you're doing a round robin. And you've got a bunch of friends, and everybody's to make a 12 and a half inch block. Well, not everybody knows what 12 and a half inches is. I know you would think they would, but they don't. And so when you get your blocks, some of them are 12 and a half, some of them are a little bigger, some of them are a little smaller. So what you do is you go ahead and square them, unless they've got points on the outside, you square them up to the smallest size. But you can't just lollygag, go along, and sew a 12 and a half inch to an 11 and three quarter inch block. It, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna, you try to squeeze it in, you're, you're just gonna have a lumpy, bumpy quilt. It's not gonna be square, it's not gonna be pretty, you can't quilt it out. It's, they've got to be the same size, okay? It's not like you can take a pair of scissors to a jigsaw puzzle piece and cut off the innies and outies to make them work. You have to go with what you got, and you have to make it work, right? But you can't just start chopping stuff off. They've gotta to fit together. So if your blocks don't fit together, and you want them to, what you could do is you could sew a sashing around each one, and then you could size them. Let's say they're supposed to be 12 and a half, but because they're not all 12 and a half, what you could do is you could sew an inch and a half border all the way around and cut them, well, it, it'd have to be a, well, an inch and a half would give you, you could square it up to 13 and a half inches. 
okay? But if it's smaller, I would do two inch trim, uh, trim all the way around and cut it to 13 and a half inches. Your eye is not gonna see if it's off on a solid sashing as much as it will if you cut your points off. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Did that help anything with you there, Peter? Yep. Now that's going to affect the design of the quilt, obviously. But what do you want? You want to have a pretty quilt that you kind of made adjustments to? Or do you want a quilt that uh, has lost all its points? you got to decide. It's your decision. It's your <laughs> quilt. You have to live with it. I want a quilt where the blocks, when you go to sew them together, they all sew together really nicely. Well, if you were start... Fortunately, this one doesn't have any points. You know, since you haven't paid attention throughout this whole, uh, all these episodes, if you went back and watched these episodes, you would learn how to make them all the same. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Right? Tell him. In the comments, say, Peter, if you would have just paid attention this whole time... You would have learned how to make your, there's three reasons, there's three processes to go through to make sure, I've said this almost in every video, I'm going to say it again, because I don't want you to miss out on it. You have to cut it out correctly, it has to be the right size when you start out, it has to be cut the correct size, then it has to have an exact quarter inch. And how do you test your quarter inch? Remember this lesson? Go back to the second video we did and learn how to do this lesson where you sew three strips together and it's supposed to be a certain size. And if it doesn't come out that size, then you've got a problem with your quarter inch. You gotta make sure you gotta find where your quarter inch is. Once you've found your quarter inch, then the pressing. Pressing is so important. If you're pressing open, you shouldn't have any problems. If you're pressing to one side, you've got to make sure that that seam is pressed to one side, that you don't have like a fold over on the front because then that's going to not make it fit. Okay. I'm going to cut this off so it doesn't go to the bottom and drag. Now, one thing I do miss about that other machine is that big, gigantic foot control. This foot control is kind of small, and it moves around. It's very lightweight. I could get some double stick carpet tape and tape it down, I suppose, but it's so small. That other one was huge. And it had a knee lift. That was real nice. But I love this little machine. We have these in stock if you're thinking that you're needing a new machine. If you're wondering why I'm sewing on this leader and ender, go back to uh, one of the earlier episodes, one or two, maybe two, and it should tell you why I'm uh, sewing on that leader and ender. You know, if you have a friend who wants to learn to a uh, piece of quilt, tell her about, or tell him, her or him, about this video, about this uh, whole uh, collection of videos, because I think you don't have to sew this particular quilt to learn something from these videos. I think we've covered a lot of good basic piecing techniques I mean, you can build from here. This is a good 
basic way to start. We've talked about just about everything. Stuff you probably didn't even want to know. Now, at this point, I do like to kind of look and see if I've got any hairs that are in my seams because I don't like those little straggly. Okay, let's put this back where it belongs. This one goes on top like this. And then this one goes like this. And so now you can see they're the same and then this is gonna be the same, okay? So I'm gonna do this to this. Now this is section three. There are five sections. We did one and two the last time we were together. And it went together pretty fast because we're sewing on the half size. The half size uh, blocks. I hope uh, those of you who've come in and gotten your pattern or called Jennifer and had it mailed to you, one to the other, uh, are enjoying the half size. I'd love to see pictures posted. Can they post pictures on YouTube or not? Probably not, huh? No. In the comments? They'd have no. to go to our Facebook page, would yeah, they? Yeah, they can share them to our Facebook page. Which, what is our address there? Always in stitches one. Dot com? Just always in stitches. Oh, one. Or always in stitches Noblesville. Noblesville. No, that's for the website. Whatever. For Facebook, Facebook. it's just always in stitches one or um, always in stitches Noblesville. Okay. Well, find us no matter what, okay? Because. And there's a place for visitors' posts, like where they can post oh, as a visitor. Fabulous. I'd love to see them. Love it. They could take a picture of their dog and put it up, up on our Facebook page. I'd love that. Maybe I'll do that when I get home. <clears throat> we were going through the latest quilt sampler magazine. I oh my gosh, that was hilarious. That. So, the chandelier idea was yeah. a, I think it's a bust because. We're not getting a chandelier? Well, um,. When I was so excited, I was talking about it out on the sales floor, and um, some of the con some valid concerns were brought up about the heat that they generate because of all the lights and the chandelier that it would you generate a lot of heat. You can get LED lights for them, silly people. I have LED lights in mine, and I have a chandelier in my studio. At oh, home. you do? Yes, I do. Does it get hot? No. They're oh. LED lights. Where do you get those at? Well, and they look like, you know, they look like little flames, you know. They're the oh, wow. bulbs that go like this, you know, oh, wow. and they're little. And they're LED inside. You get them wherever you get lights, you know, light bulbs. Like oh, cool. Lowe's or Menards. You can say big money at Menards. Menards, I need We're to send me some money. We're not you sponsored by me Menards. Some money. Sponsor. Hashtag no sponsor. Hashtag. I think they're having 11% off of everything. Oh my gosh. Sure. Oh. So if you need light bulbs for your chandelier that's in your sewing studio, go and get them at Menards and save big money. So anyway, the reason we're talking about a chandelier is because we were looking through this magazine called Quilt Sampler. And it's put out by Better Homes and Gardens, and it's a uh, book about quilt shops all over the country, uh, and very fascinating uh, because um, you get to see inside all the shops that you may never get to go to. And it's pretty fun how they decorate and do their stuff. And, you know, we saw a lot of shops that had pets in the shop. Now, we don't have pets here in the shop. Some customers, you know, are allergic, and we don't want to offend anybody, so. We don't have pets in our shop, but we have lots of uh, stuffed pets. And we saw this one shop had a chandelier over its cutting table. Well, we just thought that was the bee's knees. We wanted us to have one. And so, just that morning, Cappy said, if there's anything you need, she, at the staff meeting, if there's anything you need, all you got to do is ask. So Peter and I went right over and we asked for a chandelier. Now we ain't going to get it. 
What's the deal with that? Well, I didn't say I never said that. Oh, you didn't say we weren't going to get it. No, oh, you were that. just saying they were concerned. Some some people were concerned. Uh huh. I say well. But now I can go tell them about the LEDs yeah, don't generate any about, heat. Yeah, yeah, they don't dra- Yeah, no heat. My my room at home's not real big, and no, they don't they don't do any heat. Okay, so <coughs> look at this. I'm gonna put this. Remember, I said this always goes on. The smaller one goes on top, so I'm gonna do it like that. And this section's gonna be done. Now, if I was sewing on the big quilt, this this whole section would be huge, huge. You might as well put the machine on the floor. Yeah, might as well. So anyway. Okay, got me a point to point here. Stick the pin in right where the point meets. Go to the next point. Stick it right in where the point meets. Push that together. Make sure that comes together. Pin that. Okay, here's a seam. Oh, points to points. As you go along, not all the seams meet up. But when they do, boy, it's important that you get them pinned in the right place. You don't want wonky blocks like Peter has. Hmm. Now, Peter, are you a pinner? Do you pin a lot or not? Uh, when things have to be matched up, yes. Yeah. But not as much as me. You're not psycho about it. Um, I mean, if it had that many seams in it, I would put in that many pens. You would? I would. Just because you're spending all the time to make the block. It, it, there's right. no reason not to have your seams match up as best as you can. Right. Now, if something didn't, if I didn't quite hit the mark, I mean, I don't think I'm going to take it out. Unless it's a block of the month and I have all month to do the block. <laughs> oh. Then I might undo it and then redo it. But if they're all the same, I probably, if something didn't match up, I'd probably just leave it. Really? Yeah. You're kind of a free spirit then. It just depends upon the quilt block. Mm hmm And the quilt. And the quilt. Because if it's an heirloomy kind of thing that you're going to, you know. If all the blocks are the same, I'm not probably going to. If you're entering it in, in the state fair. Did you know that in the Indiana State Fair, that in the Home and Garden Building, that you can enter your quilts in? Yeah. I yeah, was talking have, to the people. Yeah. Like, go ahead. Yeah, they have all kinds of categories you yeah. can enter in. Yeah. Crochet, Stitchery, cro cross stitch. Right. Knitting. knitting. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's nice to have a good representation. Photography. Yeah. Antiques are in that building. Antiques. Mm -hmm. Are you going to enter some antiques in? No, I haven't made any antiques. You don't have to make them. I know. They you just, just have, have to collect them. I know. You have to. Uh... You should probably enter your scissor collection. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? Like I think your, your I think all notions. those people would enjoy seeing my scissors. I think it would too, and your pin cushions. And you should pen. enter in one of your oh, pin cushions. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay, this is section three. Benito. I learned that um, our county fair over here at Hamilton County, I think yeah. they have an ice cream contest. What do you mean? It means people make ice cream. And it's Are judged. you kidding me? And you no, get to test I'm not. it? And you get to test it? Well, I'll, have to, get the, back. The I'll have to get back to you on that. I bet it's just the judges that get to test it. I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. They might make enough where anybody anybody can test it. Well, I used to judge at the state fair, and on the days that they were uh, like uh, testing the cookies uh -huh. and uh, judging the cakes and all that, uh -huh. we would get to eat the samples, some of the samples, because they only save like three cookies out of the whole big batch that comes in to display. Because oh, wow. you know it, the fair is a week long. Yeah. Who wants to eat a week old cookie or a week old? cake. So anyway, we got to eat all the 
entries after they were judged. That was pretty fun. Okay. Oh. Now, where does this go in the big scheme of things? Let's look. This is the one with the bare paws. So that one goes, it's going to go right here. I'll scoot it over after I get this one made. Okay, let's go on to number section four. That's this section right here. So I'm going to start with these two. I'm going to sew those together. Hopefully these have been squared up. You know what I mean? We'll find out. We're going to find out. Look at these split. Nope. This one is, but the nine patch isn't. Back to that nine patch where we kind of have to guess. Kind of have to guess. Okay, I think I've got it. It's just a good thing on these nine patches there's no points. Get the point? <laughs> Hope everybody had a good, oh, I already said that, had a good weekend and everybody was safe. If you have military people in your family, took the time out to remember the price that they paid if they lost their life. See, I love when it works like that. Now let's see what these are. Oh. That's dead on. This one's too big. I don't know why I didn't screw these up. Probably just lost my... Uh, you know, Dad needed me, and I had to go away. That happens a lot. Got interrupted. Maybe Miss Chloe needed to go outside. We saw a big old fox in the yard today, Peter. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was scared to let her out. Oh. Until it got to be light out. <clears throat> Love this chair because, it, you know, it rolls good. Yeah. I'm, okay. Let's I love mine because it rolls good too. Yeah. They're like the best chairs. They are. Okay. So I'm looking at my book there to see how that goes, and it's going to go like that now that it's the right size. That's all good. Well, this one's a little bit long. Well, I'm going to block this one. I thought it was the right size, but it didn't seem to be. Okay. I thought it was on the mark, but okay, there's that one, and there's that, and there's oh, two way. I mean, the top and the bottom are okay, there's not much trim on that top. See that? Hmm. So, that must be in where I was looking when I thought it was squared up. Hmm. I'm telling you, you got to take the time to do this. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't be stopping the video, stopping sewing on the video to, to do it. But it's important. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Plus, look at how nice it looks now. Oh, it looks really oh, nice. Oh, very pretty. Okay, let's see where we're we at. This one and this one goes like this. Okay. Yeah, so now it really fits good. Pin those sections down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to take the time to, to, to make it right at the very beginning. Okay, 
Okay, now, how are you, babe? How are you, little one? Bitty, bitty, pretty one. Da, 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 da. Anything exciting going on in your life, Peter? Not really. The hot water heater went out at home. Oh, that was brother. kind of exciting. That was at Bill's house. That's my husband. We live in separate houses until, because um, I had to go live with my dad. He lives across the street from where we used to live. So Bill keeps our house, you know, uh, lived in because, you know, when you, when a house just sits empty, it's like it loses its soul. You know what I mean? It's just like it becomes haunted. hollow. Not haunted, haunted but oh. hollow inside. <laughs> you mean spirits don't move in and haunt it? <laughs> I'm thinking time, of, I got Halloween on my mind because Halloween time, fabric's starting to come in. <laughs> when we first moved into that house, I thought there was a lady in the wall singing. See? Uh-huh, because I would hear this humming noise and it was most evident back in my sewing room. And I would talk to her and say, oh, what a lovely voice. And then uh, Summer came and she went away and I thought maybe I had upset her. Well, actually it was, we lived by a highway and it was the tires, the semis, the hum of the tires on the highway. And because in the fall and the winter, there's no trees to buffle, muffle the sound. And so that's what I was hearing. <laughs> It wasn't the lady in the wall at all. <laughs> it, it was Goodyear. It was Goodyear tires. Oh. oh, my goodness. The ways we entertain ourselves. Did you have a good imagination as a kid? I don't know. What do you consider good? You know, did you make things up and... and tell stories to yourself or, uh, you know, play with your trucks and, and make up uh, adventures where they were going? Or did you just sit in front of the TV and let the TV entertain you? Well, I didn't watch TV growing up. You didn't? That probably was good for you. I listen, no, I did like listening to music. So yeah. I listened to a lot of music. Oh, I love listening to music too. I colored a lot when I was little draw and color. That was what I did. But I would tell stories. Mostly on my sister. <laughs> okay, now this one's going to go here. This one's going to go here, so I'm going to lay that over. Lay this one over. Here we go. I don't think... I think a lot of these um, mini patterns still are waiting to be picked up, Dawn. Oh, really? Because when I looked in the bin when I worked on Saturday, there yeah. was some in the bin. Okay, well. So, reminder. Okay, if come you. Come get your fun patterns. Yeah, if you bought your kit here and you're interested in uh, having the half size measurements, it's not a pattern. I, I misspoke. Yeah, it's, it's not a pattern. It's, it's just the, the measurements. measurements. You the have to have your book. Yeah, you have or to it have won't already. Make any sense. You have to have already purchased the pattern. Uh huh. Because it won't make any sense because it's just absolutely the measurements that you're going to cut. And instead of cutting it out all at once like we did this quilt, you would just cut the quilt uh, the blocks one at a time. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah, you don't use the big measurements to cut it out. You use the one-at-a-time measurements that go to each block and cut them out that way. Now, I think I'm going to uh, hang this in my sewing room. It's very bright and cheery. I really like it. The big one I made for a sample here at the shop. So it's going to live here at Always in Stitches. But this little one's going to come home with me, and I think I'm going to put it in my quilting room.
Do y'all have a quilting room? Are y'all lucky enough to have some place that you can leave your stuff up all the time? Peter, do you have a room that's just for your sewing? I do, I do. And crafts and stuff? I do. Isn't that nice? Oh, it's you gotta wonderful. got to consider that a blessing, really. It's very wonderful. Because there are some people who have to take it down and put it up, take it down and put it up, like every time they want to eat. Um, there is this one girl, she used to always sew in her bathroom because that was where the best lighting was in the house. She sewed in her bathroom. Plus, she had a piano in her bathroom. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that was a pretty big bathroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never heard of anybody having a piano. I wonder if it had a bathroom. chandelier, if it had well, a piano. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe it had a know. chandelier. I, I think it was one of those houses that wasn't built with a bathroom. Or it had a candelabra. Well, ooh, on the piano. Ooh. Anyway, I think it was one of those houses that didn't originally have a bathroom. You know, it had an outhouse. And they turned one of the big bedrooms into a bathroom. Okay. I think that's what uh, uh, the girl was telling me. Her name was Sarah. Her name is Sarah. With a pedestal tub. Uh huh. Probably. Well, when the electricity goes out, you really know how much you depend on it. Do you have your sewing machine on a surge protector, Peter? I don't. What? Is that the truth? Yeah. I want you, the next time you get paid with your paycheck, go out and buy the best one you can afford and get that sewing machine on a surge protector, young man. Do you know your warranty's not good if you don't put it on a surge protector? Didn't know that. People? <laughs> Don't be like Peter. I unplug it when I'm done with it. Yeah, but what if while you're using it, a surge goes right. through the electricity and you're... You'd be buying yourself a new sew machine, buddy. I guess I would be. Oh, people. People, get your sew machine on a surger. Now, see, that's just going to bother me all day long. I might have to go out and buy him a surger before I leave work today. I'll, I'll order one. Will you on yeah. Amazon or something? I'll order one. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I didn't. Just, I didn't think to put it on a surge protector. Yeah, you. Gotta I thought, have well, it on I'm plugging surge. it in and unplugging it. You know well, what I mean? Well, that's nice for that. Yeah, but what about when you're using it? If something goes through, yeah. like, what if somebody would hit a power line, you know, wreck into a power line, and then the lights would surge. Oh, we have would surges surge. all the time. Do you? And oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. And you have yeah, a really nice sewing machine. Yeah, because every time I, like when I come home, you know, in the, and I have to reset the clock on the oh stove or goodness. the oven. Oh, my goodness. It's the worst. Peter, do you live out in the country? No. I'm, I, I guess I should get a couple surge protectors. Why? Why do you need, do you have more than one sewing machine? No, but I'm sure there's other things that aren't plugged into a surge protector. That need to be? Mm -hmm. Well, for sure, your sew machine. I can't think of anything else as important as your sew machine to get on a surge protector. Oh, I'm so glad I asked. Tiny oh, I got a message. Very tiny one. Read it. As my husband tell me, my dad was up. So, Heed the warning. Get your sewing machine on a surge protector. I don't know what made me think of that, but boy, I'm glad I did. I'm glad you did. You probably saved somebody today. I might have saved you, or Peter. Less, or somebody's machine's going to burn out, and they're going to be like, oh, man, Dawn told me to get a surge protector. I should have I should have listened to her. Hey, is this machine on a surge protector? Yes, it is, my dear. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> It swingingly oh is. God. Okay, this one goes this way. You're standing in my way there. Watch chair. Okay. Watch chair. Okay. Watch chair. Now, one thing I found out this week, I had to go to the eye doctor. Okay? So now I'm going to start sewing these to these. I'm going to sew these two little ones first together. I had to go to the eye doctor. 
I have to go every year. I actually go every six months because, you know, they're watching my pressures because I'm old. Old people have to get their pressures watched. So anyway, I don't know what the doctor and I were, what brought it up, but, uh, oh, I do too, yeah. I was telling the doctor that I had never, ever had two pairs of glasses. I've never had a backup pair of glasses. Oh, backup. Pair. Now, I have worn my glasses since I was six years old, and they always have to be on my face. I'm as blind as a bat without them, okay? So I told him, I says, you know, it's time for me to get new glasses, and I have never, ever had a backup pair of glasses. I said, I think I've been pretty lucky. Uh, uh, but lately, I've been losing things, so <laughs> I think I'm going to get a backup <laughs> pair of glasses. And he says, well, that's a good idea because you are legally blind, you know. And I said, no, I didn't know. I said, I knew I was as blind as a bat, but I didn't know I was blinder than a bat. You think a bat is legally blind? Well, they don't drive. No, they don't. They don't even have a driver's license. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I don't know why that bothered me so much. but Why do they say blind as a bat? Because bats, they don't need they, eyesight. They, they, because they, they don't fly, see. They can fly around without they, it. They fly with their senses. The, their spidey senses? Their uh, sonar. <laughs> they have sonar. Their radar? Yeah, radar. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's why you say blind as a bat, because... Bats are blind. They can't see. Those bats are so cute. Ooh, do you have bats? No. You know, bats are good to have around because they eat some mosquitoes. I've never heard of a bat attacking anybody. And But they'll eat, eat mosquitoes out of your backyard. So a lot of people put bat boxes in their backyard to, to attract bats. The things you find out on a quilting YouTube video... Bat cave. Bats. Blind as a bat. Well, so anyway, back to me being uh, legally blind. So if I ever uh, lost my glasses or if Chloe ate them or if something would happen to them. You're pretty much stuck. I wouldn't be able to drive. Yeah. I don't even know if I could get to the bathroom. <laughs> I probably could feel. I tried to. Uh, I tried to thread my sewing machine once oh, with geez. my eyes closed. Oh really? Because I thought could you I do have, it. Could I you have, do it? No, I couldn't. <gasps> I because it. Oh, was I want to try it. I couldn't find this little thing down oh, here. Oh yes, that it's, thing's a pain. That's a, that was a really hard yeah. thing to find. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. this one right here, where yeah. it goes in at the needle, those were the two hardest ones. I couldn't feel them. So yeah, I thought, oh, I've done this a million times. I bet I could. I bet I could. Uh, Thread this machine blindfolded. Well, when you gonna? If you ever want to try something funny, if you can balance, like you know, if you could do something like in balance, mm -hmm. and you say, "Oh, I got pretty good balance," try doing that exact same thing with your eyes closed, and you can't and watch what happens to your balance. Really? Yes. Absolutely. Hmm. So, like, if you put a stack of books on your head, like, and you have to walk straight, if you took and closed your eyes, you wouldn't be able to do it? Like, if you're trying to stand on one leg or stand on uh, one foot, and, like, you can do that with your eyes open, but then as soon as you try to close your eyes... You can't do it? It's it's a lot harder. Okay, I'm going to try it. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get this okay. on camera. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to stand on one foot. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see. Should I stand? I'm going to... Pick up my left one. Okay, I'm on my right foot. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to close my eyes, okay? Okay. It is hard! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's try the other leg. Okay. So here I am. I got my eyes open. I'm kind of balancing on that. So, okay. So I don't even know if I can do this with my eyes open. Okay, my eyes are open. Okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Peter, you're right. Isn't that the craziest thing? It is thing? the craziest thing. That is weird. Oh, that's a fun party game. Yeah. Everybody at home is going to be doing that this weekend. <laughs> all their friends. They're going to be doing it to all their friends. You know what I mean? Oh. We like to have fun here at Always in Stitches. This is the fun store. It is. We are the fun store. Okay. How long have we been here, Peter, on the video today? An hour. Have we already been an hour? And 14 seconds. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay, it just well, flies, doesn't it? It does, it does. I'm going to finish this up, and then uh, we're going to come back next week and do number five, section five, because I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about backings, getting ready to uh, get your backs prepared and ready and picking out the fabric. Okay, so this goes to this like this. Are we going to put that on the end of this video or start a new video? Uh, no, I'm just going to talk about, you know, just a little bit about backing, about picking out your backings, colors and things to look for, not really going in too deep about, you know, how to apply it and all that. I'm just going to talk about some fabrics I've picked out so that you guys can start thinking about what you want for your backing. Some of the things to consider. Like a lot of people, they like to piece their backs with like, put different, if they have leftover blocks or, you know, they like to get artistic with their backs. You know what's funny is, of the quilts that people um, bring in either for show and tell. Yeah. Or quilts that they pick up from our long arm services that we've quilted. Right. And they show us um, any of them where the backs have been pieced, the staff just ooze and ahs over them. Because, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you finish a quilt, it's expected to have a solid piece of fabric on the back. That's right. expected. Right. But if you do the unexpected and you piece your back, then it creates more visual interest. And people seem to really love those pieced backs. Right. That's just my observation and my experience of working in the quilt shop and how people react and respond to, back, you know, quilts that have a solid back versus quilts that have a pieced back. Right. Well, and, you know, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I got the front done. I'm not going to, you know, the back, just get it done. Just get it done. But the people who take the time to actually do something fancy on the back as well as the front, that is pretty impressive. Um, there's a customer that shops here who's done probably... I don't know, three or six, I want to say six, six or eight quilts over the last year that she's brought in. She has, I want to say she has just as much excitement designing the back of the quilt as she does the front of the quilt. Really? Because she puts a lot of thought into the back of the quilt. Really? It's a lot of fun to see them when she brings them in. Okay, now I'm going to show you something here. All these seams have made... Do those have to be matched? No, they don't have to be matched. Oh. No. Oh, thank okay. goodness. Okay, right. But all these seams are very stretchy, okay? Oh. Making this block seem to be bigger. It's oh. not bigger because, look, it's not bigger. It's not bigger. But because it's very stretchy, mm -hmm. okay, I have had to pin every intersection. And what I'm going to do now well, is smart. I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to let my feed dogs help me work it in to uh, <coughs> the top that is more straight. And I'm going to use my uh, stiletto here. Stiletto. Because this little baby right there keeps wanting to pop up. And I'm going to go slow. those hairs out of my way. I did lower my stitch length this morning to 1.8. It sounded like you did, because uh -huh. I could, I when I was watching the quote block being sewn, uh -huh. I could see that. It wasn't going through as fast. It wasn't going through as fast. Uh-huh. Yeah, I lowered my stitch length. Yeah, you like the lowered stitch length. I do because, you know, when you're working with this many seams, I really don't want those coming apart. And if they have oh, come apart, I really the want... block right there. Yeah, I, on my smaller quilts, yeah. definitely. I always lower that stitch length. Never thought about it like that. Yeah. Because the, sometimes the edges come undone. Right. And when you're sewing it together, you know, that's when you're... 
uh, that's where the... Um, All right, look at this, folks. Yeah, it's going to come One pin up. left. One pin. And it still, it still matches on the end. And it matches up. I'm impressed. Yeah, let's just see that it's look not making. Right look at that. Okay, now let's cut that. My goodness. So a little... And I guess the moral to that story is, is that you just take your time with it, okay? Now, this is the part. Look at all those points. Look at that. Point, point, I feel like, point, I feel like you've point, done this before. Point, I've done this a little bit before. And that all comes out. And that's great. And there's no puckers. So, uh, happy with that. One of the girls on uh, on uh, YouTube that is also in the Facebook group. Hi, Diana. Hi, Diana. She came in to visit me. It was so nice to put a face with a name. I enjoyed her so much. She came in. She has one of these machines like I have here, the 13, she, the 4120. She's yeah. so sweet. She came in for her lesson. She is so adorable. And uh, we just... We just enjoyed her so much here at the shop. So that was nice. It's always nice to put a face with a name in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk, to, you talk to people on the phone and you imagine what they look like. Sometimes your imagination gets away with you. Okay, so that's number uh, four. Let's see where it goes in the whole rotation here. Section four. Okay, so it goes, I'm going to move this one over. This goes there. These two go with that. These two go with this. This will be for next time. This one goes with this. And then this one moves over here. And then this one, which is the top, this is the top, goes right here. Look at that. And then we, we have one that, this one will go here. And we'll just have to sew the sections together and we'll have her done. So you can kind of get an idea of how she's going to fit on this <laughs> little board right here. <laughs> Isn't that going to be fun? Yeah. So anyway, so I went out on the floor today and I thought, well, I'm going to look and see what we have in the way of fabrics that would maybe go with the back. Now, there's nothing in the world that says it has to match. Nothing. nothing. There's nobody out there saying, oh, yeah, you got to match. But I kind of do like to match <laughs> because I'm matchy-matchy sometimes. Well, especially if it has green in it. I'm pretty but sure you're probably going to pull out the I'm green. I'm pretty sure I like green. Now, here's one I picked, and it's a green, but I typically don't like to put light on the backs of my quilts because it's the part that goes against the person, you know, and it's going to absorb the body oils and, you know, it's going to be touching your skin. So it's going to get, it's a little more apt to get a little bit more uh, use. And so I don't typically go this light with my backings. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I picked that one out thinking it was nice. Now this one, look at that. I love that. It picks up the light colors. It's got all the greens. And you know how I feel about green. But one thing I want you to notice about it is it's directional. It has a direction. Now if you want your scoops, scoops to go down, you can make them go down. If you want them to go up, you can have them go up. I kind of like them up. Sideways? Um, I suppose you can make them go sideways. To me, up or down. That's for me. Mm. Uh, so when I, when I buy the fabric, 
I'll have to keep that in mind that I will have to cut these probably in three big sections and I'll have to make sure when I do cut those that I keep the direction the same. So make sure if the fabric you love is directional that you take that into consideration. Now I found this, I thought, well I'm gonna find something that has the pink and the green and the yellow, and I found this. That's pretty. It's got all the colors, but to me, and I, this is a personal thing, obviously, this feels modern and this feels old fashioned. So I probably wouldn't pick this, but even though it carries all the colors and it's really pretty with it, it's just not speaking to me. Now those were all the 45s that I found on the floor that kind of spoke to me. We did have a couple 108s that I liked. And this is one of them, this green. You know, I love green. It is also directional. Now, would I want the, the lines to go horizontal or would I want them to go vertical? That's something I'd have to decide when I bought the fabric. <coughs> but this is the one I think that really speaks to me. What is it saying? It's saying, ooh, I'm pretty and I think I go really good with this quilt. It's a little bit light, but there's a lot going on. Uh, I like the way it's modeled. It's going to be on the back. It's 108, so I'd only have to buy three yards of it. Um, I wouldn't have to piece it. So all those things are positives. You know, when you put uh, positives and negatives, you know, on a piece of paper, those are all positive things. Cons and pros. Cons and pros and cons. That's it. That's what I was trying to say. So this is kind of pretty. It doesn't have any green in it. Now, what if I wanted some green? Well, nothing says, Peter, nothing says that I couldn't buy some of this and put this in between. Like have this, a section of this, and then another section of that. That would be really pretty, wouldn't it? That'd be awesome. Yeah. So if I wanted to incorporate this green in there, that'd be really pretty. And that's what we're talking about when we say a pieced back. Uh, sometimes the fabric's not white enough and you do have to piece your back. And we're going to get into that a little bit more next time that I see you because we're going to talk about how to lay your back out and how to get the appropriate size that you need for your quilt and uh, go into that a little bit more. But I just wanted to just show you a little bit about my thought process of when I'm choosing my backings. So I hope that helps. Um, if you haven't started your blocks yet, it's a good time. I know summer's here and you're outdoors and you're doing a lot of that. Maybe you're saving this quilt to do till the fall. That's fine too. Uh, you can always go back and, and watch and rewatch the videos. Hope you have a really good week. Come and see us if you can. We're right here in Noblesville, Indiana. And uh, man, all the staff is here today. It seemed like everybody was at the staff meeting. So uh, we're all here to help you. We want to help you make your projects successful. And uh, it's just a great community to be uh, involved in. So get your sewing machine all hummed up and get to sewing. See you next time. Bye.